Hello, and welcome to Lawless Conversations with Katie. I'm Katie, your host. This podcast goes through various difficult subjects such as abortion, gun control, prison systems, or gender, to name a few, and dives into all different aspects of the arguments that might be offered or discussed. At the moment, we are wading our way through the subject of abortion, and today we will look at sterilization and the morning after pill. Although I have spent a lot of time and effort into researching these topics, I am by no means an expert on this subject or any other subject I will explore in the future. So take my thoughts with a grain of salt, and of course, if you have any questions or things to add, please share them. I try my best to keep my own biases out of these explorations, and because I am talking about many aspects of a subject, including opposing ideas and arguments, know that these are not necessarily ideas that I subscribe to or hold personally. I will, however, explore different arguments as if I do believe in them in order to truly explore all facets of this subject. Finally, because these are difficult subjects, there will be some content that is hard to hear and might be triggering. Please understand I am not looking to insult anyone, but to explore these subjects openly and honestly. I don't want to convince anyone to think like me. I want to convince people to think, period. So without further ado, come have a lawless conversation with me. This episode is going to be rather short since sterilization and the morning after pill are two quite short subjects to talk about, but I do think they're important in relation to the discussion of abortion. The morning after pill. This causes a woman's body, if she has had sex, to either skip ovulation or make it more difficult for the embryo to attach to the uterus. This is disputed in the abortion discussion because some see it as an abortifacient. However, those who see the morning pill as an abortifacient will also put hormonal contraceptions in the same category. This causes the argument to lose credibility because it lacks accuracy. This is quite a difficult conversation in relation to the morning after pill because in my research, at least one site when it was talking about the way the morning after pill works, it does express that at some point there is a possibility that if the egg has been fertilized by a sperm, then it will cause a very early term abortion in the sense of causing the vagina to flush out or start your period earlier or If it has been fertilized and the morning after pill does not work, it is possible you would have an ectopic pregnancy, which means it has been fertilized within your fallopian tube and that is not viable. It's very um, deadly, not okay. So one could absolutely make the argument that a morning after pill is actually an abortifacient. However, if you then take that and extrapolate that the birth control that one takes orally, the hormonal birth control, is also an abortifacient, then you absolutely lose credibility to your argument because they are not the same. However, the discussion of whether the morning after pill is an abortifacient or not is an interesting one because there is evidence and logic behind it being an abortifacient. This pill is only effective, though, if a woman knows that she needs to take it. For example, the man might not be honest about when or where he ejaculated. Thus, she would not know to take the extra precaution. This is an interesting element in the abortion discussion, or really just the sex discussion in general, and that would be the use of condoms or consent in using condoms. For example, there are some trends that people talk about, whether they actually do them or not, I'm not sure, but there are some trends that are talked about where a man will take his condom off without the woman knowing and finish in her without her consent. And this is an interesting discussion because in some people's view, that would be considered rape because that was something within sex that was not consented to. However, it is kind of a slippery slope from that to having to get consent for every single thing that is done in sex and kind of ruining the whole idea of sex in general as it is a spontaneous and enjoyable activity. But because there are possibilities of a man taking the condom off and not being honest about what happened, the morning after pill is not always going to be the most effective or good choice because the woman might not even know. It is also not foolproof. Just like all other forms of contraception, there is still a chance that fertilization will still happen. 
The morning after pill also affects a woman's body and often changes her cycle. Thus, it cannot be taken every time she has sex. If she is using the rhythm method, the morning after pill can skew her cycle for at least a month, if not longer, and put her at even more risk of unwanted pregnancy because she cannot accurately predict her ovulation period. Moving on, beyond any kind of hormonal changes or pills that one could take, sterilization is another option for both men and women. It is actually one of the few options that both men and women can choose and actually skews more towards a method men are more likely and capable of doing. A vasectomy involves a minor surgery where the vas deferens is cut and cauterized and or sewn up. This stops the sperm getting from the testes to ejaculate. This can be a very effective contraceptive. However, for various reasons, reversing this procedure and having a child later in life is not as effective. Thus, young men who might want a family or are undecided might not want a vasectomy because it could affect their ability to procreate in the future. There is also the possibility of a vasectomy reversing on its own. This can happen without the knowledge of the man and lead to unwanted or accidental pregnancies. It's also important that men know this about getting a vasectomy. A lot of men might not realize this or might not be told this when they get a vasectomy. However, I do think that trend is changing and doctors are advising men to come back to the doctor every six months to make sure it hasn't reversed itself. On the subject of vasectomies, there's an interesting issue of ego. Staying away from the temptation for sarcasm, there are men who might object to getting a vasectomy for various other reasons, such as it being emasculating. By no longer being quote-unquote potent, they find it hard to separate their identity from their sperm count. I may not be very effective at staying away from sarcasm, but it is kind of hard in this subject. This mindset can make it hard to change men's perspectives because potency is tied so closely to their worth. There are also men who see getting a vasectomy as inconvenient and an unreasonable hardship because there is a minor surgery involved and a recovery time, albeit a short recovery time. Getting a vasectomy is less desirable, especially since many women are on birth control. Men often think that because something is being done to their nether region, it constitutes a major surgery and scares them away from the option altogether. Education is an important aspect of the option of sterilization, which will be discussed later. Sterilization for women is called tubal ligation and is even trickier. This process involves blocking or cutting the fallopian tubes. When a woman gets a tubal ligation, it can have a very bad effect on her hormones depending on her age and other functions in her body. It is also not easily or effectively reversible. It's almost not reversible at all. If a woman makes this choice, there is little alternative other than surrogacy or adoption. Thus, this is not often a viable option for younger women who simply want to avoid unwanted pregnancy before starting a family. And honestly, Young women who try to get a tubal ligation are often turned away because it will have such a bad effect on their hormones. Questions for this week are, do you consider the morning after pill an abortifacient? Why or why not? And obviously, some people are going to come back with definitions, but this is more of a personal thought or definitions. I'll take either one. Secondly, what is your experience with sterilization? This is a question for both men and women. Did anything change in your hormones? How did it affect you? What was your experience when getting sterilization? And how has that affected your life in general? Please share with me. If you are interested in commenting about this episode or answering any of the questions I just asked, you are welcome to. You can either send me an email at lawlessconversations at yahoo.com. That is L-A-W-L-E-S-S-C-O-N-V-E-R-S-A-T-I-O-N-S at yahoo.com. You can also comment on Twitter at lawlessconvos, L-A-W-L-E-S-S-C-O-N-V-O-S. Finally, you can also contact me on Facebook, if you just look for Lawless Conversations, two different words, L-A-W-L-E-S-S-C-O-N-V-E-R-S-A-T-I-O-N-S. I look forward to hearing from you. The references to any sources that I use in each episode will be available in the bio, along with all of these social media connections. 
Join me next week as we dive into the next section of abortion, which is going to be adoption. Thank you for joining me for this episode. I look forward to next week.